Okay, so uh, we've got Bigad with us for an upper limb viva. Uh, are you ready? Hi, yeah, I'm ready, Wendy, thank you. Okay, so you've got this 28 year old uh, male who's presented to your trauma clinic uh, after a fall from the roof. Uh, look at the x ray and tell me what you're thinking. Okay, this is a plain radiograph, uh, anteroposterior view of the clavicle and the butt shoulder. Um, and I can see a fracture of the mid shaft of the clavicle, uh, which is quite displaced. Um, I would first like to assess the patient uh, according to the ATLS guidelines uh, to make sure this is an isolated injury. I would like to assess his neurovascular status, know more about his uh, hand dominance, his occupation and any hobbies. Yes, yeah, so all this is information is in front of you. Um, um, ATLS have been done, he's, uh, he's in your clinic, he's, uh, it's an isolated injury, he's right hand dominant, uh, he's a smoker. Okay, and his neurovascular impact. So managing fractures of the clavicle is quite controversial and it's a hot topic in orthopedics. Um, um, for most of the patients, I would need to have a discussion in clinic as long as there's no striking absolute indication to fix the clavicle. Uh, where, are these, where are these absolute striking indications? Which includes open injuries, uh, associated vascular or nerve injuries, um, skin tenting, which is intending to pierce the skin, or if it's a segmental fracture, because one of the fractures tends to go into non-union. Uh, for other fractures of the clavicle, a relative indication would be um, the age, level of activity, hand dominance. So with a young active patient, I would definitely have a discussion in clinic and I would be tempted to fix if the patient understands the pros and cons and would like to go down the operative treatment, uh, okay. which is open reduction in turner fixation. Uh, I imagine I'm the patient. Uh, what will you tell me? So the majority, I would tell the patient, uh, the majority of these fractures do heal well. If they're left alone, you put a polysling for two or three weeks and then you're out of the sling and you start doing range of motion exercises. Um, some of them don't heal, it's called non-union. Um, again, if they don't heal, you can be asymptomatic non-union. It means that you don't have any symptoms in terms of pain or loss of function. Um, so you don't need an operation basically. Only if you have a symptomatic non-union, you might need an operation later down the line. Um, if it heals, it can heal with a bump, a little bit of a bump down the uh, collarbone here, uh, which, is, which could be a nuisance to some of the patients. Um, uh, it might take a bit longer to heal, which means delayed union. And those are basically the, the, the disadvantages of non-operative treatment. Okay. If you have an operation... I'm uh, a bit, and I'm worried about my, my, the strength and the function of my shoulder. So going back to the literature, um, uh, we've got two important studies, multicentric studies that were done. One of them from Canada, uh, the Canadian um, uh, Trauma and Orthopedic Society have published in 2007, um, a multicentric study. And they reported that uh, patients who had an operation had significantly better functional outcomes as compared to the non-operative group. Um, they also said that at one year follow-up, there was higher union rates uh, if, you, if you had an operation as compared to if you have not had an operation. Um, from the UK, there is the UK trial, clavicle trial that was published in the JBGS in 2017. Um, and again, at three months of follow-up, they have not found any significant difference between the operative and non-operative groups in terms of non-union. However, at nine months uh, follow-up, the operative group had lower non-union rates of 0.8% as compared to the uh, non-operative group who who has shown non-union rates of 11% of the cases. Uh, there was also better uh, dash and constant shoulder scores in the operative group. Um, so this would encourage me to operate uh, on patients uh, who are young, quite active, uh, and, are, uh, and understand the, the, the disadvantages of having an operation and are willing to go through the physiotherapy and the rehab stages. I would also explain to the patient that if you have an operation, it, there is a high uh, chance of having metal uh, uh, hardware irritation, which warrants another operation uh, for removal. Sometimes you end up with a, with a patch of numbness under the clavicle uh, because of an inadvertent injury to one of those superficial nerves that supply the skin. Um, um, and this can uh, disappear on its own, and sometimes it doesn't. So the patient should be warned of this uh, as a complication. Yes, I totally agree. I think you covered it uh, very well. Thank you. Thank you. So what do you think uh, you've done? Um, I think um, on the positive side, 
I, I do understand that the fractured clavicle is, a con is an area of controversy. It's a gray area in orthopedics. Um, um, a couple of years back, uh, uh, no one used to fix fractured clavicles, and then there's an era uh, uh, in which everybody moved towards uh, operating on these. And now again, the question arises whether are we uh, overdoing it or not? Is it an overkill? Because many of the patients do uh, unite, and many of them, even if they don't unite, they're asymptomatic. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think, well, I, think you, 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 I think the buzzword here is that, <clears throat> and the, is that you left it up to the patient. Uh, you didn't okay. make the decision. Uh, you know, I, I know that you're not going to give him these sort of dash scores or these sort of scientific terms, but you were demonstrating to the examiner that you knew your evidence, of course, which is which is very good. Uh, uh, so that's I think that's the key of the whole Viva is that you you are able to elicit the pros and the cons. Uh, you are able to elicit the evidence. Uh, you demonstrate that knowledge uh, uh, or that rationale to the patient, and you let him make the decision. I think that's what you've done. Yes, thank you. Good. So I think this is the. These are the uh, take-home uh, messages. So it's a controversial uh, topic. You have to uh, acknowledge that in the exam. You could mention the absolute indications for the RF. Uh, mention the different uh, factors. Um, and I think this is one of the topics where you have to be aware of evidence, because the fracture of the clavicle itself, there's very little to talk about, and you just have to drag the examiner towards the evidence. And speaking of evidence, uh, this is the uh, uh, famous paper from the Canadian Orthopedic Trauma Society. I think this was the one that um, um, sort of advocated the uh, operative treatment uh, in the young active individuals, uh, as it showed that they uh, have significantly improved uh, DASH scores. Uh, this is the clavicle trial, which uh, Bigad was referring to. Uh, it's a much more recent trial, a UK trial. Uh, I think also you should be aware of that for the exam. And uh, yeah, thank you, Bigat. Would you like to add anything else? Oh, I think you've covered the take-home messages nicely. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.